And welcome back to Survivor Hot Takes. It is me, Coach Drew, a.k.a. not a juror, uh, as compared to Andrew Savage, who did, in fact, make the jury. <laughs> uh, joined, as always, by Emily, who is... who doesn't count, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> who does not count. You know I had to throw in that iconic <laughs> line. Come on. Come because on. Because we are talking about... This is part three of our um, Black Winners story arc uh, as we mm-hmm. talk about Jeremy Collins in Survivor Cambodia. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess getting right, getting right into it, initial thoughts when you saw him on the cast based off of his game in San Juan del Sur, and were you pulling for him, period? Yeah, um, I think that, like, honestly, I have to rewatch The Blood versus Water 2, to be honest with you. Um, but I remember Jeremy, even like from San Juan del Sur, you know, and um, specifically, I remember his connection with Val. So I'm glad that that really rang true, especially even in this season. Like, come on, like the firefighter family, oh man, you know, but he did so, so well. It's kind of being able to balance that and not make it something that was an emotional sort of thing, especially in front of um, the, the tribe. But whatever was behind the scenes, y'all, you know. So anyway, yeah. I was really excited that he was on it. And I thought that he really hit the ground running in a different way than he did in San Juan del Sur. What were your thoughts? Yeah, so uh, San Juan del Sur is one of those seasons that at first, like, I liked it. I didn't hate it or anything. Yeah. As I look back on it, yeah, the season, it's almost like the bone where it's like, yeah, these people don't know what they're doing, but they have a lot of great characters. Uh, But Jeremy, Kelly Wentworth, um, Reed, those are the people in, in San Juan del Sur that actually knew what they were doing, and it oh, sucked. No, never mind. I went early, and it sucked seeing them all go early. But it was awesome that Natalie won because she kind of picked up on what to do once Jeremy left. Um, yeah. So when I saw Jeremy on Second Chances, I, I mean, obviously I always pull for the people that are black, but also I just really wanted Jeremy to win just because I really liked him uh, in his first season, mm-hmm. um, and I liked. And we're going to touch on uh, on this a lot, and I, I want to get to you in a second about this. But I don't. Look, Jeremy talks a lot about this, the whole meat shield strategy. You know, is mm-hmm. he's one of the first players to ever vocally say this is the type of thing that I'm doing. But I feel like he's falsely credited with coming up with the strategy because I feel like it's been going around since like season two. Um, right. With you know, even, you, you go with uh, Tina using Colby as like a shield to protect her from the fact that she's running the game. You go yeah, with and she kills Ethan him with kindness. And, yeah, yeah, definitely. Ethan using Lex, Vesepi yeah. using Sean, Amber you know, using Rob too. Amber you know, using Rob. and there's yeah. a there's a lot of different. But I think this is the first time that's ever. And I'm. Someone's going to correct me, but I'm pretty sure this is the first time that's ever been specified that this person is mm-hmm. doing this. I'm going to surround myself with Joe and Savage and Spencer and Fishback and Tasha and all these other people that mm-hmm. are bigger targets based off of what they did in the first season. And in Joe's case, just this season two of yeah. he's not going to lose. And I think it worked to, you know, obviously it worked because he won, but you surround yourself with enough of these people and they all feel like they're attached to you that when they go, they're going to hold it against the other people instead of you. And, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to, to that in the end. So what, what are your opinions on the, the meat shield strategy? Do you think that, um, do you think that it's been around for a while or, you know, do you think that Jeremy was the first person to actually like perfect it? And, uh, do you think he went about it the right way? That, that's a good question because I think that like there's like a little bit of an added spice to this season because this is second chance and it's second chance as well because every single person on here in some sort of way or dictation is a threat. You know, we have a lot of the big social threats. Um, we have a lot of the physical threats. You know, we have a lot of the tactical and strategic threats and the people who are able to kind of make quick adjustments, very, um, you know, at at the flip of the hat, you know, with all the different crazy things that were being thrown left and right. So I think that 
yeah, meat shield was definitely a, a, a phrase to my remind to my memory, you know, that was coined by uh, by Jeremy. But I also do think that it, it's just a matter of what people were perceiving as a threat because everyone was a threat this season, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I I think that what what uh, really helped him out was the fact that Joe kept winning at the merge, so. It didn't matter who was a social threat or a strategic threat because all of, everyone was so focused in on we need to get Joe out. You have Steven sitting there crying saying, mm-hmm. I'm not losing to another Joe. To another golden and, boy. Yeah, he kept yeah, saying I'm not, I'm not doing this again. So everyone's putting all of this all of this heat on Joe that everyone's forgetting about these strategic and social threats that are still sitting there. Even like True. Kelly Wentworth, she – and I, I, I might be mistaken, but like, I'm pretty sure she only gets votes at two or three of the merged tribals. One is, or well, two of them was where she played idols. So, mm-hmm. but she was clearly a social threat because she she knew or she knew there was a possibility that she was going home. The first, the the Wentworth doesn't count uh, tribal, um, and she also got in good with Kimmy. And, uh, and Joe and all these other people that kept her name off the block. When all of her allies are getting picked off, Cass and Abby and Sierra, they're all getting picked off. And the two times that people tried to take a shot at her, she was protected and knew that she was probably going to have to play an idol. So yeah. everyone is looking at uh, Joe when in reality these strategic and social players are just slowly making it through the game. And I, I think it, it helped – Shit, everyone that made it past Joe, it helped them out a lot. Right. Now, if if Joe made it to the end, um, we have we have a question um from from the comments, but I'm I'm gonna um I'm gonna ask it, but I'm also gonna kind of twist it a little bit. Um, because hey, hey Kim, love you. Um uh that's my best friend. Um so <laughs> uh Kim Kim asked the question, you know, if, if Joe didn't pass out, do you think that he would have had a shot to win? You know, do and if we could flip the question as well, is there anything that Joe could have done that would have, that would have with what he had to give him a shot at, to make it to the end, you know? Well, so let's, let's say Joe wins out. I feel like he'd still probably go to the end with Jeremy and probably Tasha. Mm-hmm. And I don't see, I don't see any, the only person I see getting like enough votes to potentially beat Jeremy at the end is Kelly. Mm-hmm. That's because three of her biggest allies are on the jury, and I feel like she could potentially sway another one or two. But I don't think that anybody else for merge on except for Kelly Wentworth beats mm-hmm. Jeremy at the end. Like right. I, I, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to, uh, to to think of anyone. I agree with you. I think that Keith maybe gets like a vote. Uh, mm-hmm. But he deserves more. Yeah, he deserves Keith like is two. adorable. Keith is adorable, but like I, I don't, right. I don't see he, anyone else. So Joe getting to the end, you know, as unlikely as that is, just because eventually Joe's going to lose, especially when his kryptonite is Keith Nail for some reason. Yeah, um, I, I don't see him beating Jeremy, and especially with his with Jeremy's final tribal performance, which we'll get to. Right, anyone would be hard pressed to beat him. I kind of have a hard time as well, like thinking about like Joe is, I mean, again, like the game of Survivor is outwit, I'll play at last, you know? And I think like, obviously like Joe has the outplay part in a way down, you know, when it comes to like just physical strength, you know? And that's just something that like, we work with what we have as a survivor to make it to the end, right? But there's a lot more that goes into the game, especially now. It's not just the strongest player makes to the end and wins the end, happy, roses, whatever, you know? Yeah. It's it's a lot more like what are the physical and manipulative ways and, you know, the, the tactical ways that you were able to get yourself to the end. And all Joe would have in his resume is, well, like, I was stronger than you, you know? And I think yeah. that it, it, it there's a lot more whenever it comes to building that social alliance and those relationships. Well, and I you think know? at some point someone calls Joe a strategic uh, threat during a confession. I'm like. Yeah, hey, but my I said it out loud. I said, why? <laughs> Because sure? I think that the only thing like that we like I talk about this a little bit, you know, with um with Kim. Hey Kim. Um I, I talk about this with her a little bit, and I'm like, well, you know, like 
he he takes on this provider role in a little bit of it, you know? Like, I mean, you, you at least saw in the beginning, like, oh, I'm going to make you guys hammocks out of, like, you know, the little, like, uh, was it, like, coconut bag or something? I don't know. Like, he, or the, the fishnets. That, that's what he did. And, so like, so... Driver. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, um, like I don't know. Like, I think that like he he has a little bit of that social game from the start, but it's not something where he does it in a manipulative way, which is what I think at the end that that, that the tribe's really looking for. I would love to actually see him in a final tribal. I don't know how he would do. I don't like. I don't Joe. think we'll ever know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. I something tells me Joe's probably not coming back to the show. <laughs> you um, don't think? Oh no. No, <laughs> no, no, no. We'll talk about that off air, but no, I don't think Joe's going to be back. I think I know what it is. Um, I think I know. <laughs> so back to Jeremy, uh, a non-POS, um, but a POC. Uh, we we don't get much of Jeremy for the pre-merge only because his tribe keep, keeps winning. And in yeah. fact, the only time we get a lot of him is the episode they vote out Monica, mm -hmm. who is on this cast for some reason. Um, but even then, that's more of a Kimmy Cabinberg uh, episode. We just kind of get Jeremy's opinions on, oh, yeah, Monica's trying to screw this up, like with this all women's thing, and I just I don't want to do that. And, um, mm -hmm. But when we hit merge, it becomes, it almost becomes the Jeremy Spencer Wentworth show. Mm -hmm. um, with you a know, taste of Tasha. I think we get a little bit of Tasha in there. I think Tasha, Tasha was a big pre merge character. I don't like T Tasha in the merge. Like she just, I don't, I don't like saying like this because I like Tasha, but like, except for the episode where she almost drowns, um, we don't really get much of Tasha uh, once the merge hits because there are all these, we, we get that her, her and Cass blowing up on each other. Yeah. So, yeah. When Cass leaves, it's like, okay, yeah. Now we're going to focus on Wentworth doesn't count. And we're going to focus on Spencer trying to be a, human being and yeah jeremy trying to keep his family thing quiet um very true very true so we you know we get to well jeremy has an idol he plays it uh but we get to the uh the family visit and jeremy i mean in two of his three seasons has had the best family visit of any family visit just because he love you can tell he just loves his family specifically his wife uh for val. To the moon and yeah to the moon and back and so it's for val. and val comes out and you know she's telling him that they're pregnant again or well, that they're having a son and he just you know it's i love I, I love everything about jeremy collins um and even rewinding a couple of episodes where savage is talking about <laughs> just talking about how he met his wife and jeremy has to take his time away to go cry about it yeah and that's what we all want in life, I feel like. Um, but to watch it happen in real time on TV, you know, watching this guy that looks like you, um, you know, feel so much emotion over, you know, his wife and his kids and how yeah. you know, I have to keep this kind of stuff quiet because I don't want to be known as the firefighter with the kids and the wife and all that when she talks about the reunion. And I get it. Um and I think it's smart, whether he did it on purpose or not. I think it's very smart for him to bring it up at Final Tribal. Well, and that, that is a strategy that other survivors have used in Final Tribal to really help. And I mean, and it's not just, you know, I mean, like it not just like sharing a family personal story, but I think it's just really like making you human, you know? Um, yeah. We, we've heard like people talking about why they are going to be giving their winnings to charity. Um, we talked a little bit and I mean, we talked with Jeremy, Adam Klein, even like he, I mean, I don't yeah. even know if I want to say that that's a strategy, but he did definitely incorporate the fact that his mother was yeah. sick. Yeah. You know? Like you said, I feel like humanizing is a great word for that. Just even if you're not using it as a strategy, you're using it to say, Hey, I'm a human, no matter what yeah. type of crazy shit I did during this game. This is what's going on in my real life. Yeah. So I'm not. So I'm not just some random sociopath that's out here trying to manipulate people. Like I do yeah. have reasons behind why I'm doing this. And in Jeremy's case, it's I have a son on the way. I've got a wife. I've got two daughters at home at the time. This yeah. is why I am playing this game. But 
let's let's once again I want to get to that later. Let's go back to the family visit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know what to no. Go ahead. Just okay, just let's... keep talking. Just tell me when you want to talk. I'll be just sipping my wine. No. <laughs> just tell so me when. Family visit. <laughs> family visit. <laughs> it's critical. This is a very pivotal moment. <laughs> what? Do you want me to shut up? No. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Let's talk. You were? Wait, wait, no, wait, just, talk. Just, just, no, I said just talk. Oh, okay. Wait. This is a very, very pivotal moment, you know, um, because this is at the point where Tasha, Spencer, and Jeremy are um, specifically separated, you know, from the from the rest of the crew. And that's whenever they're really able to establish that core three. And I think that's really important as well, because, like, we haven't really talked at all about cores until this point you know what i mean we've talked about voting blocks which was an evolution of the game even if it was just for a moment you know um and at this point for me like i think this is the the piece that really helped to create that and there, there's nothing that changes the game at least i believe more than whenever we get to a family visit no matter what it really helps to to really amp the uh, like push up the ante you know what i mean yeah, you either get rejuvenated because you get to spend time with your family, or you get pissed off that someone didn't yeah. pick you to go visit with your family. Yeah, and you start thinking, oh, well, this person chose these people, which means that I need to do this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, the episode, no, oh, no, a couple episodes before that, you know, Jeremy plays the episode, or plays the episode, plays the idol on Steven, yeah. and he looks at Spencer and he says. I would do the exact same thing for you. And I think that that's one thing that Jeremy did this season as far as he made sure people that like the people that he was with knew that he was with them 100% period, which is why he didn't get a vote cast against him until final six. Yeah. During the crazy thought, episode. Yeah, and everyone thought that they were in with him. So mm -hmm. he never like, and you know, so no one ever voted against him because they all thought he was his, their best friend um and i think that that's that goes a long way when it gets to the jury because yes yes these people f probably feel betrayed or whatever but they also this is their second time playing they understand you know this is what he had to do to get to the end and he had to right. come with tasha and spencer um mm -hmm. and you know he he did what he had to do he took out what is probably his best competition to yeah. potentially win in kelly well um can I can I ask something on that as well? Like, um, or like whenever we kind of got to that core six, or you know, even if whenever we got to let let's push it back to to that family episode. Okay, so the family episode, who all do we have at this point? We have um, we have Joe, we have Abby, Kimmy, Keith, Kelly, Spencer, Tasha, Jeremy. The, yeah, I wrote I wrote all these down right before I did my homework. <laughs> Are you proud of me? Um, this is the squad. My question for you is why do you think that he jumped and jumped on Tasha and Spencer as the people that he thought would be his best bet for the final three? Why do you well, think? I feel why like because, well, the Tasha thing, I think, is because they had been together from the beginning. Right. Like, do you think that their game differed that much, though? No. And I think that's why Tasha didn't get any votes at the end. Mm. I think mm. that, like, I, I liked her final tribal performance. Um, I think that people. I, I won't bring, I mean, is gender involved? Maybe, I don't know. But I do think that people saw too many similarities between Jeremy and Tasha's game. They just assumed that Jeremy was the one doing everything. And he, for all we know, he could have been. It seemed like he was. Um, and that's why he got all of, I think that she could have gotten any votes. I don't think that Spencer was going to get any votes in that final three. Um, I think that if he was smart, uh, he, you know, maybe I don't bring Joe because Savage has a, a crush on Joe. Savage might give him a vote. Uh, maybe I don't bring um, Keith because Keith might get the oh adorable guy vote. A couple of them. Um, maybe I don't bring, or I know I don't bring Wentworth because she has Wentworth doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. Went, Wentworth had a resume, so yeah. I think that it makes sense that he didn't align. You bring, the only Wentworth. person that you could bring to the end where you can feel fairly confident you'll beat them is Kimmy. So, and I, and I which is do why I keep going yeah. back and forth. Yeah, like I, like I don't understand why Kimmy was the one that was ousted. Was it just like because well, like? So I think. Oh, oh, you mean at the family visit? 
Well, it wasn't just like with the family visit, but I mean, it was obvious that she was on the bottom of that four four person I alliance. I, just I feel like Jeremy probably would have brought. I think she he would have replaced Spencer, maybe well, not even replaced right. because it was him, Tasha, and Kimmy. I do feel like if Kimmy hadn't done what she did, she he probably would have voted uh, brought her along because you have a. I mean, he won either way, but you have a better chance of beating Kimmy at the end than you do of beating Spencer at the end. True. Um, yeah, very true. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I, I think that, oh, I, I didn't mention this on air, but I feel like what Kimmy did was probably smart, just based off of what her perceptions are. And if her perception is, Spencer's taking my spot in this three, I need to know, is the leader of this alliance, Jeremy... And, you know, she, she kind of, you know, blew it by going off in public while people were watching her. Yeah. But I don't think, like, I do feel like Jeremy probably would have brought her and Tasha to the end and tried just, to, you know. Yeah. No, no. I, that, I think that makes perfect sense. I think that, honestly, her best bet, though, would have been to just do it one person beforehand. Like, because the, the person who was voted out right before her was um, was Abby. Um, and, and, and you know that Abby's not going to, she, she could yeah. see the writing on the wall between his Spencer and her just were like water and, and vinegar or wait, no, wait, what was, what's the saying? Oil and water, right? Isn't that, that's the saying, right? Not yeah. water and vinegar isn't the saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry guys. It's been a day. I knew, I knew where we were going. <laughs> oh man, but the internet didn't know. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> um, anyway, like, but like, so they didn't get along and like everyone knew that Spencer, Tasha and Jeremy were, were, were they were a unit, you know? And like, um, with the occasional Kimmy, but if Kimmy approached Abby and said, "Hey, I want you, me, um, Keith, and Kelly to make a move," I think that Kimmy probably would have been able to make it to the end, and she actually might have gotten a ton of votes. You know, if she was yeah, able to defend herself. Up, between, well, you know. well, I mean, I think that if you know, in a, in a I, I hate going down this road because I hate fantasy booking, but let's say she succeeds oh and gets Jeremy out, yeah, at, at final six, she probably still have to get rid of. Spencer and Wentworth in order to win. Cause then in that case, she'd be at the final three with Tosh and Keith. And mm -hmm. even then I feel like Tosh and Keith probably still have a better chance. But if you, you know, if you take out Wentworth, Spencer and Jeremy, that's a pretty good, I'm not big on resumes. I think they're stupid, but that's a pretty good resume to have sitting at the end. Like, Oh, I took out the three people that are probably Wait, going to win. Why do you think that resumes are stupid? Uh, that's another episode. We can. Oh, <laughs> that's but another I'm episode. I'm so passionate I about it. Okay. I feel very passionate about. I, I used to. I was wrongly. I used to say on the show. I was. Oh, I hate Will Wall because he was the one that started this whole resume thing. Actually, it was Tasha that actually said it for the first time on the show. I'm pretty sure Tasha Don't was the first ever person to ever say it. Smack on my queen. I love that woman. Yeah, I love Tasha too. And now <laughs> I think that's why I don't say I hate the person that started this whole resume BS because it is Tasha and not Will Wall. But back when I thought it was Will Wall, I'm like, oh, I hate Will Wall because he started this whole resume. <laughs> um, but that's another episode down the line. Uh, why Coach Drew hates resumes. Um, but. We get to that crazy final six. We, you know, we're talking enough about Kimmy. We've talked enough about this. We get to the crazy final six, and Kimmy decides, "Hey, I've you know my only move this so far is taking out Monica pre-merge because she wanted Good move. to not take as many clams out the ocean or whatever the mess." That um, was the start. Yeah. yeah. Let's get out, Jeremy, and I think. That if she had just played it a little bit more cool and not gone off with Keith and uh, Wentworth in front of Tasha and Spencer, they could have potentially pulled off, pulled that off. Yeah. Um, the and I think that that was Jeremy's lone mistake in the game is trusting her, and it still didn't matter because he fixed it by playing his idol when he needed. Yeah. To. And his social awareness was good enough where he knew to trust Spencer to read that, you know, yeah. like, and I think that that in itself, it, it's all a matter of being able to have other people to spot your blind spots. Cause we all have them, you know, and Spencer's Spencer wasn't great with his, with his social game, but he was good at social awareness. You know what I mean? Um, um 
whenever you get a chance, I think I, I think I may have told you about this one here before. But watch Eager Turtles. Spent Spot tries to have emotions for I think fifteen minutes. Video. It's this compilation of Spencer trying to have emotions on the Survivor. And, oh my god, yeah. I'm so excited. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll watch it later. <laughs> um, um, can we talk about that? Find about that that six tribal because yeah. I have a lot of questions on that. Even as a super fan, go ahead. Like. Okay, so to, to set the scene for everyone who hasn't or who hasn't watched it recently, this is like probably one of the most like mind-numbingly like moment. Like I, your, your jaws on the floor for Netflix easily. Netflix brings out the blackboard. It's it's insane. It's it's what I've never seen that in my life until um, we get to the Siri, which just for Siri. Yeah, um, we won't talk. So um, but we've already talked about that. Um, so okay, so. There, there's six people, okay? At this point, we've already discussed that Kimmy's going to flip from her original four, which means that Jeremy, um, Spencer, and Tasha are all going to be voting, and their plan is to vote for Kelly Wentworth, okay? Then we have Kelly Wentworth, Keith, and Kimmy on the other side, and their plan was to vote for Jeremy, okay? Both Jeremy and Kelly Wentworth both give their immunity idols, okay? Which means that they're both immune, which means we have no votes, which technically, in my mind, means that it's a tie, okay? Which means they would go to revote. Revote means that now it's going to be either Tasha or Kimmy, okay? At this point, they both have they have a tie as well. So my question is, Je Jeff said that basically what they had to do is that they all had to come together and unanimously decide. If they couldn't decide, then they had to vote for someone who wasn't part of the tie, okay? Which the only person immune would be Keith. But my question is, okay, because um, we had th uh, we had two. Wait, yeah, wait, no, three, three for Tasha, and we had three then for um, for Kimmy at this point, right? Mm -hmm. They're both tied. So why didn't they go to rocks? I'm still so confused by why they did not go for rocks. Because you can't you can't go to rocks in that situation because the only person that is eligible to go home at that point would be Keith. No, but um, but if they both voted, right? I mean, they, they reached a tie. Okay, so yeah. they reached a tie. That means they're willing to go to rocks, which means yeah, that Tasha but, doesn't but, have an immunity idol. Kimmy well, no, have... but the the two people, the two names that tied. Don't go to rocks. It, it's similar to like when it happens in Millennials versus Gen X, where like it ties, it ties again. So now the two people that the votes were for are now immune, and the people that couldn't break the tie are now not immune. So in this case, Keith would be the only person that would not be immune in this okay. situation because Tasha so and Kimmy tied the vote they can't and Wentworth can't get votes Spencer can't get votes and Jeremy can't get votes so and it would have to be either Keith gets voted out by default because no one he has no one else to go against uh go to rocks for or everyone decides we're either voting out Keith or we're voting out Kimmy okay yeah. so is that like an evolution in the game because in um in marquesas didn't that happen whenever everyone went to rocks like everyone went to rocks whenever this happened in the final four right no no at the final four in marquesas uh oh no that was was that final four that was yeah because it was four. pascal yeah. nalia um Vesepi, obviously and then um someone else i don't remember oh kathy 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 uh Kathy. Sorry, Kathy. <laughs> um, how did that go down again? And we just rewatched more cases, and yeah, we can talk about it some other time. I yeah. guess, like, I just like I, I was just really confused about like if this was an evolution because I, I could have sworn at least in more cases that this that if you didn't have any protection, then you had to draw rocks. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see. What you, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that one out. Yeah, I think it might have been an evolution. Okay, just um, text me about it later because I'm just very confused. I have no idea. I was sitting there so confused. Right, right to Jeff Probst. <laughs> Something that happened during that tribal that doesn't negatively impact Jeremy's game, but could have if he had answered the question wrong, is him basically antagonizing Kimmy after, you know, it turns out that Kimmy flipped on him. Because even when even when the vote tied and Jeremy's sitting there saying, who flipped? Spencer's yeah. like, are you serious? Like, it was clearly Kimmy. Kimmy did it. Yeah. Jeremy didn't believe it. And when he found out, he antagonized her, which I get because I antagonize people that annoy me or turn on me too. 
Um, but when we get to that, well, well, we'll get to that in a second. We get to Final Five. Keith goes home. Final Four Challenge is very important because as long as Jeremy or Wentworth win, they're winning the game. Mm-hmm. Period. Like, there's no way that the two of them, whoever wins in that situation is vote, vote, excuse me, voting out the other, and they're going to go to the end and probably win the game. Right. Jeremy wins. Kelly's the first one out, I'm pretty sure. They, and Jeff brings up, oh, yes, the same emotions for two different things. It's like, yes, Jeff, that's obvious. Um, and so we go, you know, Wentworth goes home. Wentworth tell, uh, writes down Spencer's name and says, you know, this is the last time I'm writing your name down on his parchment, which for the Spencer fans out there that think, oh, yeah, he only lost because Jeremy cried about his family and tribal. It's like, no, that's not true. Kelly, you're already straight up upset that she's not voting for him at the end. Anyway, yeah. um, Cass kind of made that one apparent at Final Tribal as well before Jeremy cried. And, right. and there, it was very apparent that t- spent, Tasha didn't even get asked questions by most of the people. Um, it's crazy to me. Like, honestly, yeah. I think that, like, Tasha... From, from, from what we're shown. From what we're shown. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But I also, like, I mean, that there wasn't even, like, a focus or a case for her, even in, in the edit, you know? And whenever you think about, like, Tasha started from the bottom, you know? And she stayed at the bottom whenever she drew, like, the bad uh, the bad bandana or the bad, what's it called again? The bad bup, yeah. And, like, she had to go to Angkor Tribe, right? And, like, they had literally nothing. And then, like, she had to minority. work with Abby. Yeah, she had, a, she had a really hard time with Abby and she had to work with Savage to work herself continuously up, you know? Like, I just I, I just wish that they were able to make a case because if you can't make a case for every single person in the final three, it's not as engaging to watch as a viewer. You know, even if there's an obvious choice, which Jeremy, I was very excited for. He's one of my favorite winners of all time. I just really, really wish that we were able to make a case for all three of them, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, credit to Jeremy. And I don't think that Jeremy necessarily dragged Tasha along. And Tasha even mentions that, like, if, no, I, not at all. What, no. if I disagree with what this big alliance was saying or what Jeremy was saying, I, spec- I spoke out about it. I did my own thing, this, that, and the other. And, you know, I think that Tasha got a – Tasha's probably one of the best zero-vote finalists that's ever happened because, For like – For sure. You know, and it, and it, and it sucks – but she was next to the obvious winner, you know, for a long time. And that at a certain point, you have to get rid of. I understand that you're out there and you perceive things differently. I don't know. I feel like the fact that they tried to they tried to take out Jeremy at six yeah. should have made you think, uh, yeah, Jeremy, like people are looking at him as the leader of this whole thing. Yeah. Um, and people don't. And the problem is people are looking at him as the leader of the whole thing. But they also don't hate him. So it's not like it's not a boss and rob and all star situation where he he's looked at as the leader of the whole thing, but people also hate him. Right. It's not a Russell Hands thing where, you know, he's looked at as the leader of this whole thing, but people also hate him. It's a Jeremy is such a nice guy and he's the leader of this such uh, of this whole thing. Let's vote for him to win. Right. So, like, can we also kind of talk about, like, how he got there, you know? Like, I think that I, I've talked to you a little bit about this. We even we touched on this even, like, with Joe and Joe's journey, you know, um, how we made it towards the end. You know, we, we talk about how it's a continuous balance between, like, a touch of luck, emotional strength, social strength, mental strength, and physical strength. That it's, it's a pillar and it all has to balance, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that with with Jeremy, Jeremy only won one challenge. And I mean, in, in his case, it was the only one that he really needed to win you at the very win. end, yeah. you know? Now, how much of this do you think was physical? You know, how much of his journey do we think had to be physical? Was it just that amount? Do we think that like he was, he was, cho- he um, defaulted from winning or tried not to overcompensate? Oh, to no, be- I, I think he was trying. I, Jeremy doesn't seem like the type of, and I feel like if he was throwing challenges, he probably would have, they probably would have shown something. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think that Jeremy was giving it his all. It's just that one, he had to go against Joe for most of the pre-merge because even during the, or not the pre-merge, uh, the merge. Uh, mm-hmm. And then once Joe's gone, you still have Keith who for some reason is very good at challenges. Um, 
and Spencer, who's for some reason is pretty good at challenges. He's very and, good at challenges. Yeah, yeah. they both so, are. I don't think that it's necessarily non-physical. I just think that in this season, he was up against such physically or uh, challenge gifted people. Yeah. That he, and that and I think that's that that helps him because he doesn't have to focus on the physical aspect of the game for the most part. You know. Yeah. He wasn't out there winning reward challenges and winning immunities and having people say, "Oh no, Jeremy's a physical threat." Because as right. we've seen this season. People are looking at the physical threats as the threats to win the game, which is wild. So as long as Jeremy doesn't sit there and win four immunities or whatever the case is, mm -hmm. people are going to forget about it. And that, that, that goes back to the whole meat shield thing, once again, where I know how these people are thinking. I know these people are only looking at Joey Amazing and all these immunities that he's winning. So as long as this is happening, and as long as Andrew Savage is here with his, you know, cool torso and as long as keith is here his moral compass and like you know like just do the right thing oh my my heart oh, like oh steven, steven scheming and i don't like that blah 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 oh savage, that's not relax. what the game's about I'm, oh my god savage relax i was like uh, we stepped through time i love yeah. that man so I die for him I, I I don't think that necessarily that he didn't have to have a physical game in this season because right. the physical threat spot was already taken. And as long as that spot's taken, people aren't going to look at you. And by the time people figure out what the hell is going on at mm -hmm. six, it's too late. You exactly. know, it, it's too late for them to, to fix it. And then at four, all you had to do is win one challenge and yeah. you've won the game. And Which honestly, like, yeah, and like with, with this one, like this, uh, like Jeremy's win is a testament to how critical social game is in order to shape your holistic game. Mm -hmm. You know, he, like, it wasn't just the meat shield strategy. It was knowing that you had a cushion to catch you no matter how far you fell or how high you rose. You know, there was always, it was always having, it was like having like, I don't know, but what's the word? I, I want to say a cuddle shield, but that sounds weird, you know, but just like having like, having a social shield. I think that, no, <laughs> Cuddle shield. I like the cuddle shield. Can we say well, that? and I know we keep touching on final six, but Tosh and St uh, Tosh and Spencer are not dumb. They yes, they they know that Kimmy's up to something, but the fact that they are so in with this Jeremy alliance that they instead of you know saying hey, this is probably a good idea to get rid of Jeremy and then we'll figure True. it out in five, they say hey. This is what's happening. This is what needs, you know, this is what needs to get done, done. Um, I think that that's, yes, a testament to his social game, which I will say every single week that we touch on anything, the social game is the most important aspect of the game, period. I don't care about strategy or resumes or physical, uh, physical game and how many challenges people win. I don't care. If people don't like you, you're probably screwed. Probably not always. Look um, at your pedestal. Look at you. So proud. Yes. Uh, um, I have another question. Or, yeah. or do you have something else you want to talk oh, about? No, no, no. I was going to get to the uh, my favorite moment of this, or one of my favorite oh moments. Oh, my God. No. Okay. For, forget what I'm saying. What were you going to say? Uh, when they all think that Keith has an idol and Jeremy, you know, is trying to be smart and saying, hey, like, vote this way just in case. Like, he's trying to save his butt. Uh, yeah. and I get, and I, I mean, it worked there, you know, no idol was played, but no votes were cast against them either. Um, and if an idol had been played real, uh, you know, he wouldn't have gone home. Uh, but that, that's just him trying to wake up Keith and he's looking at the camera and Keith, Keith's just off and he's just in his world and it, it's honestly it's keith's world and we're all living in it like that's it's an honor to live in keith's world that's how i feel i love that i love every hair on his mustache i love that man so much oh gosh okay well, what were you going <laughs> to say i don't even know i'm just thinking about keith right now okay um i do have another question you know um but while we're on the topic of you know social influence um i think that a lot of the time you know, whenever we, uh, we, we have, um, we have every player, you know, every player who comes on has a why. Okay. Jeremy talked about, you know, how why, his why was Val this time. Right. But there's another why, you know, and the why tends to be in the game. 
do you think that there was any character, any castmate that really pushed him or gave him a run to to up his game or to always be on top of his game? Because I like I always go for like like maybe like Kelly Wentworth. I was you just know? for Kelly because realistically, like at that Kelly Wentworth tribal, the first Kelly Wentworth tribal, Jeremy's alliance is outed. Like yeah, they, like Sierra. I think it was Sierra that sits there and says, these are the people in charge of this big alliance. And she names Jeremy and she names Savage. So went and replaced the idol. Jeremy could have gone home there if they had picked the right leader. True. And so I think at that point, he, you know, probably says, hey, I probably need to put in some work with these people so that if this ever happens again, I'm once again not the target of being idled out. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I would say her. I would say people like I mean, people like uh Keith, uh, where yes, I probably beat I being Jeremy, probably beat Keith at the end, but I need to make sure that that actually happens by doing a little bit more than Keith does strategic socially so that I don't have to worry about that at that at the end. Same right. thing with he sits at the end with Spencer, who, you know, a lot of people say Spencer would have won Kagayan if he had gone to the end. And I know that there are a lot of people that think that Spencer should have won Cambodia for some weird reason. That's uh, I won't touch that. Weird one. reason. Uh, well, <laughs> weird reason. Weasel. But weird <laughs> reason. But I think that Jeremy just put in more work socially and yeah. strategically with people so that if he's sitting at the end with Tasha and Spencer, people are going to look at his social game over, I don't know why I'm blurry, um, over okay. these two. And, yeah. you know, and it, like, like we keep saying, and it works out for him in the end. And, yes, people that want to harp on, oh, if he, you know, he, he brought up his family and his wife and all this other stuff. It's like, yeah, well, first of all, this is the last time for you to talk about anything. Why wouldn't you bring up all this now? But two, he won nine nothing. I think I think it was nine. Yeah, nothing. he it, it was completely unanimous. Yeah. There was no one else. No one even so, voted for anyone else. Even if, even if he swayed a couple votes his way, it's still seven two. It's not like he swayed five right. people to turn because he was having a son. Like right, yeah. No, and I don't think that's exactly because I feel like if, if it was Spencer who dropped that bomb, like if you think about like what if Spencer dropped that bomb, right? Would, would people have batted an eye, you know? And I think that like you think about the specific, um, the specific um, conversations that he's had with people that were caught on film, you know, especially people in the Spencer. jury. I yeah, I think about how he had the conversation with Abby and how he was being like downright aggressive with her and the choice she was making i understand that abby you know she, she's a pistol you know and she she has very very strong opinions she sticks with it you know and i think but like he doesn't know how to operate all different types of people if he doesn't know how to work with with abby you know and how he was chastising her that that didn't work well in her favor you know um so i don't know i, I like to me like i i think that jeremy was the right person to share that he was having a child i think it was just the icing on the cake of yeah. his of his social yeah. uh, strategy. I think he would have won mentioning the family or not. I think he probably would have won nine nothing mentioning the family or not. Yeah. Um, and I think that Tasha and Spencer kind of realized what was going on and that they were going to lose, uh, whether he told that story or not. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, we get to the reunion uh or the finale, Jeremy clearly wins. Um yeah. And I, I mean, the reunion is the only time that it gets awkward is when Joe's like, or not Joe, when Probst is fawning over Joe again. And it's like, okay, dude, we get it. We get it. He uses um, the same speech between Joe and Malcolm in different seasons. Did you realize that? The men want to hang out with him. Kids want to be him. Women want to date him. Like he used the exact same one for Malcolm too in different seasons. I didn't did he do that with Malcolm and Caramon? 
Uh, yeah, the, um, yeah, yeah, Malcolm and uh, the one, Denise's season. So, yeah, oh, what was the camera? Okay, so oh, Philippine. Like, yep, you're right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know that the really places. Doesn't matter what season he did it in. The fact that he did the same speech over again. Yeah, Jeff yeah. has his favorites. Um, but and I and I mentioned this last week. Jeremy, besides Earl Cole, is my favorite. Oh no, my favorite black male winner. There's only three, but uh, I was gonna be like, wait, where? <laughs> Wendell sadly is second. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him because it happens in that order. <laughs> Um, but the reason that the reason I love Jeremy's win is because you know he he's a big proponent of this social game, like this social game that you know people always try to. Oh yeah, social winners like what did they do? They weren't flashy. It's like who cares? Who cares? I you know I'm not going to go on that rant again. But um. You it takes more be, strength than you yeah. think, you know, like to, to you, like, deal with people that you might not even agree with politically or whatever the case is. You're aligned with all of these people that, you know, in who are real life on national TV yeah. for a reason to be big personalities. Yeah. You know? and in real life, you probably wouldn't associate with these people. And all of a sudden you're not only in the lines with these people, but you know, you're being perceived as the leader of uh, the alliance that you have with these people. You you know, you're in an alliance with uh, people like Joe, and you're in an alliance with people like Keith. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and but you're also in an alliance with people like Savage and Tasha and all these other people. So many different personalities, and you have full control to the point where you don't get a vote until six because people finally suss, suss you out, and you still don't go home because the people that are still with you want you there right uh, i don't know i i i will always love jerry collins for the, because of that and i think yeah. that in winners at war if the merge was a little different if it had a few different people that you know i won't touch that uh he he might have even done better and he i mean he did really well in winners at war but he was he, a did incredible. he was a constant target at the merge for some reason um so <laughs> Final thoughts on on Jeremy. Ah, uh, man, I honestly like I, I think about like and, and my my numbers always change, you know, and I think that it, they change a lot because you and I have such great conversation, you know, just about like every season, and you know, like we it gives me a chance to review and critically analyze how people got to places, you know. I love Jeremy. I've all I loved him from the start. I he's one of the people I cried at when I won. I cry or whenever they won, not whenever I won. I I, I cry at a whole bunch of things, you know. But I, like Jer Jeremy winning was was a big one for me. Um, and he always stayed that way. It didn't take a it didn't take another time, another round for me to review, you know. And I think that he achieved his second chance. Um, yep. But I had like one other like quick like wrap up question just because like I was thinking about this today and I wanted to like pick pick your mind you know pick, pick your brain a little bit more like about you know this concept of second chance I, I love this concept I love the fact that like you know America got to choose you know who all got to be there I hope that happens again um my question for you obviously Jeremy achieved his second chance he won the million dollars okay out of the entire cast, who else do you think achieved their second chance, if any, or or helped to uh, redeem themselves? Kelly Wentworth. Yeah, of Kelly course. Wentworth. Like when she was a pre, she was a pre-merge vote out in in Blood vs Water too, because mm -hmm. she was deemed as a threat and and, because of her dad. Oh well, yeah, and because Drew Christie thought that she was no, it was a Drew or Alec. I think it might have been Alec. It was definitely Alec. It was one of the two. I don't know. I don't like Christie Brothers. Um, so whichever one sussed out Kelly Wentworth as a threat, they voted her out. Um, no, no, they didn't. No, that's how it went. They voted out Drew because he threw the challenge, and then Wentworth went home after that. I'm pretty I sure. don't remember this season at all. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I, I can't yeah. even can't, uh, but, but I agree. I believe your you. question. I think Kelly Wentworth uh, redeemed herself. I think that Kimmy Kappenberg. Another pre-merge person from uh, Australian Outback, mm -hmm. uh, she did well. Um, I think that 
I'm trying to think if anyone else like mm. re, re, got I, did well in their second chance. Yeah. I, I, I mean, think even Spencer people... did. Like, I'm not like I know that he he's not like I, he's did like you learn he's how like... to love. Yeah, <laughs> is that, is that, is that not what I should? But I think that like you know he he learned. Honestly, it doesn't even matter if you're perfect. I think that it just matters that you recognize that relationships you're are a robot. Important. Okay, or that like you know relationships are important, you know, and like tell me you didn't like at least like how get like at least a little tear whenever his girlfriend showed up for the very first time. He said, "I love you." I thought it was corny as shit, and I don't. Okay, think you're most, dead to me. Forget. I don't it. think that most things that happen in the family visit are corny, and I thought that was so corny. That was so <laughs> cute. You shut your mouth. That was the cutest thing. That's, I love you. That's the thing that all girls want to hear. I don't even girlfriend. care. Yes, I agree. But that one's coming from Spence Bod. Uh, yeah, it, it, it didn't it didn't come off as You're anything. You're lying. Other than... You're lying. I I can honestly say I I felt more emotion for Joe kissing his dad on the lips than I did for uh, Spencer telling his girlfriend that he loved her. We never talk about that again. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, to conclude all of this. Uh, next week we will be talking about our last uh, black winner, uh, Wendell, uh, mm -hmm. from Ghost Island. Which this will be my first time rewatching Ghost Island since like 2020. Um, I'm really interested to see, you know, because I know that Ghost Island gets a lot of flack for being the Dom and Wendell show, and or yeah, the Dom and Wendell show, but basically the Dom show. Uh, I'm interested to see if watching it again uh, for a third time might change my mindset on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know that the twist sucks. That's probably not going to change. Um, yeah. But me and Emily are going to Wendell and Bryce's uh, <laughs> premiere party in a couple weeks uh, in New York City. So if you haven't bought your tickets, they might be sold out. Uh, I think Wendell tweeted uh, yesterday um, that they had 10 left. And we have to buy one. So can you guys just, like, wait for, like, five minutes? I have to buy one more for one of my friends. Buy so one more? Just... <laughs> oh, okay. We forgot. Uh, <laughs> We were talking no. about it, I <laughs> so next week we'll be talking about Wendell to wrap up. Actually, we'll be wrapping up our our off season uh, coverage of things Survivor that are not Survivor forty two. Uh, mm -hmm. So the week after that, we'll be going right into season forty two hot takes, uh, which is crazy that we're already here. I can't believe I'm so excited. It'll be really yeah. great to watch one episode a week and not a whole season. That's going to be a nice little reprieve. <laughs> Um, so thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we've got one more left, uh, and we will see y'all on the other side.